Good afternoon, my name is Ryan Playball. I'm joined up here with Rob Chambers, uh, who works at Ryan. We're both from Lockheed Martin Space Systems Company. We also have an audience, uh, Andy Wobito and Michael Phillips. And so we're going to kind of see how Lockheed Martin Space Systems Company is inserting its best architecture. Um, I work for a shop called the Space Vehicle Integration Lab. So I'll explain how we're using the software, which is a kind of different use case than how Rob Chambers is using it on the Orion. <coughs> so just now, uh, we're going to discuss the motivation of first why Lockheed Martin even uh, interested in CFS, which you can probably already take a guess of why that might be. Uh, we're going to discuss this project we've been working on, the flight software Common Core. Um, also, we have an opportunity to potentially fly. We've been working, for, um, working on a class B CubeSat mission, Skyfire. And we'll discuss the, how it's getting used on the ON uh, backup flight software computer. Discuss our interaction with uh, as well as JSC. Um, and then some feedback we have for you guys, uh, good and bad. <laughs> so, a little bit. Uh, it needs improvement. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, motivating for us is Lockheed Martin. Uh, we're kind of in the business if you don't already know of building space vehicles. And we build a wide range of missions. Uh, we have real capital here. A couple of planetary satellites here. We have Osiris Rex on top. And then you probably recognize Maven. There's actually a big one-year anniversary party out here this weekend because a lot of our plane is filled with people going to that. Uh, and then those are satellites up there, UTS-3 satellites. Um, and there's a lot more that we do. do. But with space vehicles, we kind of have this notional software stack here that will break apart. And so we have our interface layer down here at the bottom. Uh, we're calling the fundamental layer cores used way too much, and so we uh, found a synonym for core and it's fundamental here. Um, but that fundamental layer is our executive, the health, safety, scheduling, housekeeping, pretty much everything you see in the uh, CFS core application. Um, and then we command the telemetry layer, our science layer up here. This is a really mission unique stuff up here. But what we've kind of looked at when we look at our satellites is all of these fundamental layers have a slightly different look to them. So they're all performing the same functionality. And so what we're trying to do is leverage CFS and also Heritage Lockheed Martin software to make all of these blocks have the same look to them. Um, and we, we see that there's probably going to be you can do this in some of these other layers. But this year, we're really focused on how we make this fundamental layer common across the space vehicles that Lockheed Martin is building. And so that. We've been working on this common core project uh, for flight software. And what it kind of looks like is the diagram over here on the right. And it is we're trying to leverage the core flight it is OSAL, all the applications that has been released open source. And then Lockheed Martin Heritage Software and their apps up here. Uh, we're also partnered with the University of Florida with REC, which you probably remember from Dave's first presentation that stands for um, the Center for High Performance and Reconfigurable Computing. It's a mouthful. I uh, partnered with them, and so they're really focused on multi core. And we have the Shrek based processor, which is actually very similar to the Z board that um, someone just got earlier. And we're the development platform for that based processor. And so we've been working with them, and so we've actually kind of extended this platform. Support package here. So the University of Florida developed a platform support package for the CPSP, which is they called it on Linux, and we have that as well. And so we're looking to target uh, that board. And then um, a use case that I talked about that's unique to the Space Vehicle Integration Lab is that um, we have multiple programs within Lockheed Martin coming to us saying, "Hey, this notional software stack here that you're presenting it looks really good. We want to use it." And we want programs uh, within Lockheed Martin to clone and own this stuff and then make a bunch of tweaks to it. We want to uh, tell them to use it, but only turn those knobs that you see in like the platform configuration, mission configuration, header files. But we know that they might have unique message 
ID, performance ID. And so we have this use case of how do we manage multiple missions, those real uh, specific parameters, all while maintaining this uh, signal code baseline. And so I'll talk more to that on our feedback slide. Um, and uh, like I said, we have an opportunity to take this here. Uh, we have a customer right now, internal customer. They're trying to build this guy for CubeSat. Let me switch this in the slide. Uh, this is a picture that's con off, but it's a CubeSat situ uh, Class D NASA mission that's going to have ride share with the SLS. And it's going to go get put into a lunar uh, trajectory. That's at a low cost for relatively advanced technology to space. And then it's going to return to orbit, do some rendezvous proximity off before it sends that orbit into its regular orbit. And so they're reading right now whether they want to take what I just showed you on that last slide and use that as a flight software baseline or something else that Lockheed Martin's already developed. And so we're really pushing them towards what we have because it's a great area for us to try to get something flown in space. Um, so that's an opportunity for us. With that, I will hand it off to Rob who's discussed the Orion backup flight software. Right. Question is yes. for you, you wanna come in on the Scott Floor process? Service. They're trading, they might use that uh, Shrek based off. Oh, okay. um, but I don't think they've actually made a decision on their specific hardware, but they're looking into that uh, CPSP. Okay. Hey, so uh, for Orion flight software, we uh, really guys that are, you know, you say class D or D, you can go ahead and say. We only have four. A little bit for actual flight systems on Orion, all of the class A ish. Um, we have a range of primary flight computers. We actually have a built in space load on the primary computers and release that to come at into that space load. But I think a lot of those with uh, satellite heritage who, who bust in space by jumping into a dissimilar space mode um, work with the and then to mitigate some of those cost footfalls. Um, all the reason we wanted to kind of part of the next human spacecraft and the traditional right DFS on shuttle. So we actually chose um, the DFS as the underlying structure for the backup flight software here earlier this year in the spring. And um, the multiple why we oh, and I guess the fourth one, this one down here, is that so that means come home without actual flight software at all. So you run through switches and uh, you know fire sensors and visually and so forth. I don't think you can ever actually use that. Everything you use DFS you Probably on the order of 15, 60 blocks of just the app, but we're also aligned there. 
city of ECUD is our DPU drivers uh, at Fort CFP and what's how PSP lives and how Fort CFP works. Um, we have to do some, some not changing at all, that's important, because we're doing some minor modifications to it. So, um, yeah, yeah, in your frame, we talked, I think uh, maybe it was uh, David mentioned that the interest in thinking up these time triggered internet, these Ethernet interfaces that we've got. The um, uh, telemetry interfaces, there's very prescribed uh, format that you use, but all sits way on the, on the top layer of the interface. We have some, some packaging to the, the top of the utilities there. Um, we're the FTP, that's actually, if anybody saw the FTP one, you saw the you know, videos that were downloaded, that was the standard CFTP protocol. We had to extend um, what there was there inside here to go all the way out there. Um, and approach for that is that we take the, the heritage test suite and we augment it as we've made, again, very, very well with this minor, uh, minor mod modification. And Lori and I have been during the lunch break. We need to talk how much of that we really do want to give back, back into the community. I mean, that's obviously we would like to give all of it back. Some of that is kind of unique to um, the D3I spec that Orion uses, so we'll have to talk about what makes, what makes sense there. And finally, we've got the, the new CF applications, and we're going to talk a bit more about this during the, the week as part of our um, actual presentation for flight software in general. But just you know, we're running this up, which is our backup software. Um, The um, Hoplo Mav and Phonav, that's a pretty computationally intensive um, looking at the moon and cars and triangulating. So if you're above GPS, you know, you're already in space. It's kind of similar to what Google and IT details and help them out there. And one that, that probably is an area um, or life area for us to get some stuff back to the community is in our storage for using um, flash file systems. It's very much an onboard reporter, backup system, the mission processor, and they are recording the and so the for file systems, a lot of interaction with uh, humans in terms of file downloads and, and uh, maintaining that file system on the ground. Applications that might be of use to, uh, to other users as well. So we wanted to discuss how we interact with NAS. I think I heard earlier that um, maybe it was Justin K that the interaction with NASA they were trying to have issues with, but I wanted to report that we've actually had a really well um, exchange with NASA. I know uh, Michael Phillips as well as my manager Matt Dean have had some face-to-face -face interaction with the NASA folks, but we've heard software developer. I think, I'm sorry, I think you might want to uh, attach your microphone or turn it on perhaps. Uh -oh. I'm not sure why it's not working. Is your green light on top? No. Oh, on top. There we go. Okay. <laughs> well, hopefully the online people did not miss the first half of the presentation. Um, yeah, so as a software developer, I have exchanged emails with uh, Susie and Dawson Willett, and I've always got a response probably within 24 hours, which is well to our expectations, so we just want to feed that back. Or, uh, maybe the way to do it is we do some software development, if we find something that we think might be um, a issue, we'll put it in a list. Or once we kind of have a decent list, we'll go ahead and email Susie and say, hey, hey, we think this is easy. Do you agree? Yes or no? Um, we'll have a really good exchange with them. I know that Orion um, interacts more with JSC than they do others, but again, they reported when we talked about this that their interaction with them is very helpful um, to Ray Street. And so we just want to report that back. Feedback. Um, I think we already mentioned this. He said there's going to be uh, a UT assert framework release, and so I think we're actively waiting on that before we try to do the unit test because we did discover that some of the application source seemed to be out of date with the actual unit test framework such that we weren't getting the coverage results that we saw in the readme file, but we did confirm that uh, that was true, and so we've already taken care of that. Not a bad thing. The second point here is, this, is that you need to use case we have. And so if you view CFS, and I think as you said, you said it, um, one of the hard parts was trying to figure out the entire beast of this animal. And Orion, the bottom bullet point is to this as well as this. You have these three pieces of 
software that's configurable for different missions. But first, understanding what can we tweak, what are we supposed to tweak versus what's supposed to stay static. Uh, so Ryan keeps at the bottom, and then us, we said, okay, we know all this stuff is supposed to be tweaked. We know that mission A wants to tweak this way, and mission B wants to tweak this way. How do we manage that? And so the way to do it is we built up some tools where we've actually gone in and we uh, show those numbers out of the header files, put them in the CSV databases. Um, we manage these databases such that we can uh, see databases branch to different missions. And then when we go to build, we actually auto generate all of those headers, the mission can say, platform can say, message IDs and performance ID header files. So that we are uh, managing it, but also Jonathan with the electronic data sheet, that's uh, a solution to this problem as well. And so I think we'll just stick to what we're going and kind of stand by to see what happens with that. Um, again, on this uh, multi platform support via the OSAL has been extremely beneficial. So we want continuous integration and it's really helpful to be able to develop an app, push the change, and then let it run on multiple targets and know that it's uh, successful. Uh, the, maybe the elephant room that hasn't been mentioned yet is C++. Uh, space Systems Company is actually interested or engaging in C++. I know Ryan's already using it on their backup by software. We've been to C++ event. We heard a rumor that there might be a C++ daughter Base pile out there, maybe. Um, so we just wanted to pique your interest in that's the true thing. If there is any C++ uh, coming down the pipeline anytime soon, um, and if not, maybe the other users in the room are doing it as well, and we can collaborate. Um, and then I got that last bullet point. And so with that, open up to any questions you guys may have with what we're doing. You said that you're managing the mess. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you said that you're, you're managing the mess. You said that 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 you're on that same branch that you would see on your databases with message IDs and performance IDs. And I have an area of the six tables you can put those up on the same Yeah, so it's not not auto generate. No, it, 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 uh, the files are in charge. We've seen the table also be commissioned, and so we said that needs to be somewhere that we can still manage. Created like a C++ app framework. Uh, yeah, and we 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 said using the Q2 application in the developers guide to use as our standard. So we did recently develop a C++ application. Um, so. so there's multiple people in the room that's on C++, isn't there? I mean, emergent, <laughs> right? There. This is actually mentioned that it's hard to use. It's great. <laughs> yeah, they've been doing it separately, I think. Yeah. So I don't know, I think maybe the message is to get it into the product line. Yeah. So, yeah. That's what so, I was um, that first happened to begin the discussion that you get a working group, all these people have a life in yeah. right. so, that's definitely so the the applications that I think will be released with the next framework, you know, it was essentially what was developed from Johnson's probably yeah, that could have a C++ framework as an suggested. And that would be a fairly simple way to approach this. It's minimal. I mean, the level of support is minimal, but at least it would be a guide. Yeah. I think it would be worth picking up with the... the uh, to see, to see if it's, I mean, so. Well, here's a quick one. He said it actually wasn't on the slide. So. Um, there are almost few applications. I said it verbally, but it's not it's up there. Everything we're doing, all the applications we're 
writing for Orion for the back of software and, and video buses. I don't see what a lot of auto generated from that too. So we, we worked through and Pat and I were just chatting about it, worked through some of those interfaces. Um, we also participate in a, in a virtual group, virtual team just to talk about what we learned and also maybe make we're making that other people have already figured out. More importantly, so maybe after this we can you know change and change that. <laughs> You mentioned model based development, and I think you just touched on it right there, right? You're generating code from Rhapsody, is that yeah, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So, one of the things we've been kind of exploring that area too, and one of the things that we think would be really useful is if you had a model based environment where you could um, do all subscriptions and then all, operate all subscription code and be the next step, I think. Have you guys gone that road at all? So this, in fact, there, there, there actually is a difference. Sorry. I'm stealing your thunder. Two hundred. So there, there's a, there's actually a, two, two issues here. Um, uh, Erasing C plus plus, that's one issue. That's really for coding standards. The other issue is actually object oriented. Two different things, and so what we've done is um, we we did make it so it is all compliant uh, with 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 the C++ uh, the, the standard, but but the Raspberry models are also uh, they're they're object oriented, so all the apps are all object oriented. So the uh, the uh, uh, sub subscription and all that good stuff. That's, that's all modeled around object just for applications. We've not done anything with CSEs because that's that's already been certified. So that that, that is that's that's uh, you know it's it's not all written. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I guess I'll talk it when I get to my thing. But we actually did develop a model based tool. A couple of tools available for ground teaching to auto generate. One is based on uh, a, a model. Um, it's just enough. And uh, we have a book called Collaboration to the Moon Blog that we haven't tried that one. But yeah, that's the case. You know, I think there's been several tools that exist that generate it. Most of these tools have, like, a, you know, you lost a lot of, of your time coding, you lost a lot of your time. With plumbing, it seems like so. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I think you know everybody would take six steps forward, and I mean, we're totally on board with the C plus plus. We think that's totally cool. I'll be speaking to you a little bit, uh, but one of the things that seems to be uh, of every speaker talk is the facing the tables, the managing of the Brandon put it on. We have put together a tool as well, and one of the things we have, we, we've been trying a lot of people, but we hope to continue on, and we can have this discussion here, is maybe this is something that should be brought up with the community and formalized as a group, because right now there are about uh, 10 motions. And what we can do. If we wait an hour, we'll have 11. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh -huh. 
at least one applicant. Okay, so you at the unit level. No, right, right. You guys start looking for a C plus plus coming from space and our sense. There's a lot of problems. I wouldn't say contention. I would say there's problems or challenges. Um, a version of C plus plus. What tool people can use? What makes people happy for safety and security? And uh, then when you hand code to a C++ program, what do they actually do? And if you spend 2003, they suddenly go out and grab food. And you end up with a lot of code that you really don't want to fly because you have a lot of you know, dynamic memory allocation and other problems. And if you move C++ to C11, you start picking up uh, red Atomics and more native support, which is great. I mean, because open MP support stuff is really nice and all that, but you, when you cross C to C, try to get people to agree on the safe subset. I mean, space arguments is whether a safety, an application with safety considerations need to be allowed to use the standard library. And you can find people solidly on both sides of the list, mostly. The one for it, or you have code that uses it, apply it, and they don't want to change it. But you, technically, you get higher levels than the 178 level in a standard library. So it just becomes an issue when you start trying to find a common ground in a group that's big and have a lot of code that exists that's different. That's so, a great point. Like, when you, you said we're moving to C, and I think that's when you actually touched on when you said the coding standards. So we can imagine. The Orion human rating by proper coding standards. So it's, it's not going to switch to or add in the C++. We're going to have to agree on some, um, some appropriate level of, of what to draw from and what to constrain ourselves. That's a great point. We kind of have it baked in on a primary system. I think over that. From the comment the C++ coding standards. So the, the store evolution of um, standards for C++ for embedded by buffer that we use a lot. Martin has a pedigree all the way back to trying to and Martin actually paid Barnes to help us write this curated safety critical uh, standard for flight software that can restrict certain things that are attracted in meat in plus 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 that in JSF. It can really then use over on Orion and further tailor that standard. Um, we used it within the interplanetary organizations on um, the MAVEN and the Osiris Rex program. Not using CSS, but it is we do like software written C plus plus goes on also uses going in and out, I apologize. Uh, in C plus plus coding standard. And we brought that standard into the SBIL as kind of the basis for how do we start developing C applications in C plus plus, risking what are the things that would be neat for the average C plus plus developer. I use boost or the SBIL. It's restrictive and it has its, its origins in human raising safety critical application. We are within Lockheed Martin, we are on board with kind of a single direction on how we write C plus plus. And that was investment. In other words, something that we very much might want to bring to the table and share this would be as a starting point. Address some of those specific items you talked about. We are out of time, maybe I'm heading out around the time. So we'll talk to you afterwards.